Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about the development of a Formula E car. We've got access to the TE Connectivity Andretti Technologies test car, a vehicle which serves a dual purpose. Andretti Technologies uses it for development of their Formula E car, and TE Connectivity uses it as a testbed for developing their sensor and connectivity technology. Of course, a huge thank you to TE for sponsoring this video. As some of you may know, when Formula E was first started, all of the cars were essentially identical. This was done to keep costs down in order to bring the series to life. But if innovation and technological inspiration are to come from Formula E, this of course requires competition. This is why Formula E has worked to open up regulations more and more after each season, allowing the teams to develop components which they believe will provide a competitive advantage. Rather than opening up all of the car to the team's interpretation, regulations for open development are restricted to areas which could potentially solve problems in the world of electric mobility. For these reasons, the primary focus on development within Formula E surrounds the powertrain, rather than focusing on things like the brakes or chassis, which aren't as unique to the sport. The powertrain consists of a battery pack rated at 28 kilowatt hours, which sends power to the electric motor. For Season 1, the vehicles used a single motor, which was actually the same unit used in the McLaren P1. This motor had the highest power density of any automotive electric motor at the time. Traditional motors deliver 2-3 to three kilowatts of power per kilogram, while the P1 motor is closer to 8 kilowatts per kilogram. That said, even this motor saw development changes for Season 2 to squeeze out extra efficiency once regulations were open and teams were allowed to source their own motors. One or two motors can be used, though the power from both motors must move through a single limited slip differential to power the rear wheels. Torque vectoring is not allowed, nor is using an individual motor for each wheel, so at this time it's not very beneficial to employ a two-motor strategy due to the added weight. Something that may come as a surprise, however, is the decision to use larger, single electric motors which are essentially more powerful than they need to be for the application. By using larger motors, there is of course added weight, however this allows teams to run fewer transmission speeds since the larger motor will tend to be able to produce sufficient torque across a much wider RPM range than a smaller motor. Reducing the number of gears used is important for multiple reasons. Teams are now allowed to use up to 6 gears, while the cars started with 5 gears in Season 1. By reducing the number of gear ratios, teams not only save weight through a smaller transmission, but they can also save the time required to shift gears. Some teams have even decided to run just a single gear, meaning not only can they eliminate most of the weight and complexity of the transmission, but they can also eliminate the reservoir and shifting mechanism required for pneumatic gear shifts. This of course doesn't come without sacrifice, as it may mean running the electric motor outside of peak efficiency. A drop in efficiency could mean less laps per battery, giving the advantage to teams who keep their cars out longer before the required car swap. Aside from the battery, motor, and transmission, the inverters, cooling system, and rear suspension are open to development as well. While the side pods are the same for everyone, what teams do inside of the pods as far as controlling airflow for cooling is open. This means teams with highly efficient powertrains could cut down on aero drag through a reduction in airflow or the heat exchanger size. Ultimately, the biggest focus on innovation within Formula E comes down to making things smaller, lighter, and more efficient, rather than purely focusing on outright speed. What's unique about this is that it provides a testbed for innovation within the world of electric cars, hopefully spurring ideas that can improve what we'll find on the road in years to come. Regarding the relationship between Andretti Technologies and TE Connectivity, another unique aspect of the partnership is that TE provides their own engineer dedicated to the team and traveling with them for each of the races. Matt Gould is the current engineer who's fortunate enough to hold this position, and acts as the go-to guy for anything TE related on the vehicle, while in return gaining an incredible experience to work align such a prestigious automotive racing team and provide feedback to TE on ways to continually improve the product line. Now, something pretty special that I've worked out with TE Connectivity and Andretti Technologies is a sweepstakes for you and a friend to win a trip to the Andretti Autosport Race Shop in Indianapolis, Indiana for a private tour and detailed look at the engineering behind IndyCar, Indy Lights, Global Rallycross, and Formula E. You'll get to eat lunch with team owner Michael Andretti, Andretti staff, and TE engineers before attending a technology session to learn about engineering in the world of motorsport. I'm really excited about this opportunity for you all, so be sure to enter by clicking the link in the video description. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.